Here we are so pleased to welcome in the new BYU quarterback, Keaton Slovis, joining us for his first BYU interview, if you will. Keaton, welcome to BYU Sports Nation. Thanks for having me. Glad to be a part of it. Now, when I say Keaton Slovis, BYU quarterback, what's the first thing that goes through your mind? Uh, it's, it's crazy. It's, uh, you know, just this opportunity to, to transfer again and, uh, it's kind of unreal. It's wouldn't have been able to be a possibility, you know, really four or five years ago. So um, that's the first thing that jumps out. Then, you know, again, it's just my new home. I'm excited to be a part of it and excited to have that, you know, the university affiliate with my name. Keaton, at what part in this process did you start thinking the BYU could be a possible landing spot for you? Pretty early. You know, I didn't I didn't know the situation with Jaron, but I knew there was possibilities of me declaring for the draft. So um, knowing that, getting contact from the coaches, um, really understanding that the fit would be really well. Um, it's kind of a well-oiled well machine, the offense, um, and something I think I can step into. It's not like they're rebuilding or anything. The offense has been established here for a long time. So um, kind of understanding that, and that's really what I was looking for, to, to have that, that mutual interest from both sides. Uh, made me pretty excited to be, be a, a person of interest on their end. Let's dive into the fit with BYU. Every player is going to make a pros and cons list. Let's start with the pros. Why did you feel like, okay, yeah, for all of these reasons, I feel like I'm a good fit at BYU? Yeah, first off, we're going to throw it a lot. Um, and that's something that starts from Kalani. You know, he wants to average you know, a certain amount of yards per attempt, and that's super exciting to me um, as a quarterback. That's an offense you want to be a part of. Um, and then beyond that, you know, talking to A-Rod, um, and Coach Mitchell, like those guys are so good at what they do. Um, and I think A-Rod really puts the quarterback in a position to have success. So I think um, those are the, the pros. There aren't a whole lot of cons from a quarterback's perspective. You know, I think it's really a very quarterback-friendly offense. Um, watched them on tape a lot, seen them from afar in terms of the crossover tape but when I was at USC. Uh, and again, just a school and an offense that I think also like from other schools and other coaches I've talked to, Everyone has great things to say about the BYU offense and, and what they do, and, and that's why I kind of wanted to be a part of it. So you were here a couple of weeks ago with your parents before the New Mexico Bowl. Uh, how soon after that visit did you make up your mind? Um, I told them, you know, it's my last go-around. I have one year of eligibility left. Um, I really need to be diligent with my decision. Um, I was really high on it. Um, I knew it would be a good thing. I kind of told my dad, like, I feel like this is a place I know I can have success at. Um, but you don't want to make any brash decisions and, and credit to BYU kind of allowing me to do that, um, do my diligence and um, do my due diligence and, and really just check all the boxes, other schools and make sure there wasn't anything else on the table I was doing out there. And I think I, you know, went through every other option, was very diligent with returning talent uh, type of offense I want to play in. And the more I kind of went through it, the more and more apparent I think it was probably a week or so after I was thinking, man, the BYU spots, the, the one I want. So Cougar Nation was a little nervous as Jaron Hall kind of uh, waited to announce what his future plans would be. And they were nervous that, that if he took too long, that, that to be what you would miss out on a quarterback of, of your caliber or, or somebody else. Were you worried about that? No. So, again, this might be somewhat new, but Jaron was actually kind of aware of the situation. He uh, credit to Jaron, and uh, I actually knew him last year. He's a great guy. And, um, Jaron actually kind of helped me out. Um, I was still, you know, I was, I was, I was pretty certain it was going to be BYU, but um, he, he definitely, I think he held off like a day or so announcing so I could kind of scramble and get, you know, the graphic and the announcement ready. So <laughs> shout out to Jaren. I kind of knew before everyone else, but um, I'm very grateful for him for kind of allowing me to, to, cause you know, we didn't want there to be any delay with, with the, the, the old quarterback to the new one. The new BYU quarterback, Keaton Slovis, is on BYU Sports Nation. Keaton, whether you wanted it to or not, your first interactions with BYU fans went viral. And you talked about just how strangely nice they were and the way that they heckled. So now that you're on the other side of the equation, how are you handling BYU fans welcoming you now to be a BYU football player? It's awesome. Um, I think that was the thing I really took away from playing against BYU is how nice the fans were and really how it, how great of an environment it is to play, uh, you know, in Provo because um, it gets super loud. Um, but again, the people are super nice. I was talking to my dad, like he was talking about how, man, that's like the cleanest stadium I've ever been in. And they, they <laughs> think they bring like ice cream to the opposing fans, right? So uh, my dad like fell in love with the place as an opposing fan. 
Um, so being back there, seeing the, the love on Twitter and stuff, it's really awesome to, to be on the right side of, uh, of the <laughs> fans now instead of being the person that, you know, they want to see you go down. I don't think you'll have to wave your arms to keep them quiet uh, as you're about to run a play, unlike 2019 when they made a lot of noise when you were trying to, to get things going with, with USC when you were here. Uh, let's talk about your interactions with, with the players already. And, and before we get to what you've talked with the receivers about, did Jaron uh, help seal the deal? Did he make the pitch that, that you should come here? Yeah, you know, I again, I felt really good about it. We always kind of want a player's perspective, and Jaron was kind of the last person I talked to. Um, and again, just getting that player's perspective, kind of checking off that box, but um, hearing from him lastly and, and feeling his confidence with it, you know, understanding the circumstances, um, what we're going to have to work on, what we're going to have to, how I can contribute and make the team better in the offseason. Um, but yeah, just kind of hearing from his perspective, it almost made me more, um, more positive about the situation that was before. Uh, Jaron Hall is not the only BYU quarterback or former BYU quarterback that has helped you with some insight into what BYU is about. Let's throw in John Beck. We jokingly call him the quarterback whisperer because he's worked with Zach Wilson and Jaron Hall and so many others. You have a relationship with John. When did that begin and what's that relationship like? It really began after the 2020 season. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I, I had um, a few arm injuries back to back. Uh, my arm would always get sore, so I knew that, you know, the 3D QB, um, you know, people, I didn't know who it was at the time, but I knew that 3D QB was, um, you know, people who could help with my biomechanics. I reached out to Zach, asked, like, hey, he had a great year. Who's the guy you work with? Because um, I know that that was a big part of um, his game, too. So that's connected with John, and it's been a pretty great relationship ever since. And, again, pretty early on in the process, John was the one who kind of called and said, hey, you know, I know it's BYU. Um, you know, probably you probably don't know a lot about and probably didn't know it would be an opportunity yet, but I think you have a good opportunity coming up. And um, he really laid the groundwork for um, the other relationship between BYU and, um, again, just having the other extra layer of trust. Like, John's a guy I really trust. Um, he has a relationship with the staff and, and those coaches. And knowing that, you know, he's he, he can kind of uh, uh, know who they are. You never know who, who <laughs> you know, coaches say they are until you kind of get in the building. But, um, knowing John's had experience, knowing a guy like Jaron's had experience, knowing a guy like Zach's had experience, uh, it kind of allows you to trust that staff even more, even with their re reputation. Keanu Hill, Chase Roberts, Cody Epps, uh, Isaac Rex, these are now Big 12 receivers. How do you feel about this group, and what interactions have you had with them already? I'm excited. You know, um, actually last summer I was talking with Jaron, and a few of the guys came out. Um, you know, I thought they were really talented to begin with. And, um, you know, when I came with my official, um, a guy like Cody spent a lot of time with me and recruited me hard, texted me all the time. Same with Isaac. You know, Isaac reached out, you know, I think later on in the process. But um, really, I think since then, to be able to reach out to those guys, um, you know, let them know I'm coming and um, just really get them excited because I think, you know, we have a great opportunity this next year to, to compete in the Big 12. It's a big year for BYU football. It's a big year for me. Um, and I think we're all really excited to, to, to kind of make a statement. Um, but yeah, those guys are great. You know, watched them a lot on film when I was at BYU and, and since then. So we're just excited to start throwing with them when I get to school. Keaton Slovis is on BYU Sports Nation. You just brought up the Big 12. How much did BYU moving into a Power 5 conference, the Big 12 specifically, factor into you and your decision to join BYU football? Yeah, I think, uh, well, for two things, obviously, level competition, you're excited to be a part of it. Um, it's a good conference, and um, not like BYU hasn't played, you know, Big 12 team. I think last year you, um, you guys played a good amount, but um, really that aspect. And then the other one is just knowing that, you know, obviously every year you have motivation, but I think there's an extra sense of urgency from the staff and from the players knowing that the jump to the Big 12 is, is going to be a huge year for everyone and um, kind of lay the foundation for years to come. So I think the sense of urgency – um, whether they knew it or not, it was really felt um, from my end, too, and that's kind of what I want and, and with my last year of eligibility, obviously. You mentioned this is a big year for BYU and a big year for you. When you consider what Aaron Roderick did with Zach Wilson and, and Jaron Hall and their development, how do you feel he can help you get ready for the NFL? Uh, in a lot of ways, you know, developing and as a passer, um, you know, allowing me to understand see the game for a different way. This will be my third offense I'm in. I feel like I have a good... Um, you know, really good groundwork and foundation, but I'm um, kind of excited to take it to the next level. And, and hopefully, um, you know, I think A-Rod does a great job of kind of using each quarterback's strengths to their advantages and 
uh, I'm looking forward to just learn more and and uh, you know I'm looking forward to see how he uses me too and, and to get put in the position that that he will. Caden, people got really excited, and by people I mean fans, BYU fans, when they heard that you had already reached out to the receiving core and wanted to work with them and, and wanted to work on those relationships, if you will. So with that in mind, what's your timeline like? When are you going to come to Provo, get involved, and just walk us through the next few weeks for you personally? Yeah, it's a huge thing for me. I think developing that chemistry, especially with you know one year of eligibility, you can do it. Um, but it just takes time and effort and, um, you know, sounds like those guys are ready to put in the work. So I'm going to come January 5th. I think it's my, my day I'm going to come in, um, have to get moved in and stuff. But you know, I think Chase texted me yesterday, like, Hey, you coming up this weekend? I was like, not yet. I want to, um, give me till, give me another week and I'll be there. So I'm looking forward to that. This is your third school in, in three years. You've thrown for nearly 10,000 yards, 68 touchdowns, 33 interceptions. You've faced 34 P5 opponents. BYU's coming off. Uh, Jaron Hall played 11, which is the most in school history. You played 10 last year, but 34 in your career. So what do you want Cougar Nation to expect from you? Uh, you know, I, I, can't, I can't say this is definitely going to happen on the field or, or uh, guarantee anything, but the one thing I can guarantee is you're going to get my all. This is my last year of eligibility. It means a lot to me. Um, just the opportunity to play another year of college football. Um, you're going to get everything I have. You're going to get every time of my day. And um, again, we're going to do everything we can to have a lot of success. And we have high goals, high aspirations. We're really motivated to have a lot of success in the Big 12. And um, you're going to see that on the field. Keaton, the number nine carries some extra significance for BYU football fans. It's retired. It's Jim McMahon's number. So what number are you going to go with when you get to BYU? Um, yeah, you know, I never actually chose nine, so um, I guess I'll close. I think I told him we'll go close to. I think I'm gonna go with ten this year, so that should be pretty exciting getting to the double digits. And uh, you know, I've always kind of liked ten and kind of wanted to wear it, so I guess this is finally the time I get to, to, to do it. <laughs> when you take the field in September, you'll be the first starting quarterback at BYU to have actually started against BYU at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Uh, what will that moment be like for you when you take the field against Sam Houston here in nine months? Uh, we'll be exciting first, probably because the, the the fans will probably be quiet when we're on offense, like you said earlier. But um, <laughs> you know, again, it's a great atmosphere. I think you know that's one of the things that was exciting too. You know that that BYU and um, its fans kind of fill out the stadium and have a great atmosphere and to. You know, frankly, um, I don't think I've ever been at a part of I've been a part of multiple sellouts. I think I've only been part of one home sellout. And even in that game, that was one last year's probably a lot of opposing fans there. So to be a part of some games, hopefully we'll sell it out a few times. And uh, again, I'm just excited to kind of have that excitement in the stadium on on, uh, on my side. Yeah, I'm not a betting man, but I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to experience multiple home sellouts <laughs> in year one of the Big 12 in Provo for sure. Keaton Slovis is with us on BYU Sports Nation. All right, we've talked a lot about you as a quarterback. That clearly is the number one topic. But what do we need to know about you aside from football? What are your hobbies, and what do you like to do outside of football? <laughs> that's, that's a good question. You know, again, football takes up the majority of my life. Um, you know, even like yesterday, I'm having dinner with my family. I'm kind of leaving to go watch some football. So that's a big part of it. <laughs> um, you know, I'm not playing football. I like to play video games. Kind of a good way to keep in touch with friends from home or hang out with friends at school. Um, but I'm not a huge gamer. I'm not good by any means. It's really just something I like to do. And then I'm um, a big music guy. I like listening to music. I, you know, I collect vinyl and all that stuff. But oh. other than that, you know, it's just football, football all the time. You collect vinyl. Now, I think Dave, you've perked Dave's interest because Dave likes some old school rock bands. Like, do you have a favorite vinyl record? Um, I think I have an original, not original, but I have like a pretty old uh, Revolver Beatles um, vinyl. That's like, wow. that's one of my favorite wow. albums. That's, that's next level stuff. <laughs> Have a Beatles <laughs> vinyl. All right, Keaton. So with uh, music, and I want to do a couple other quick hitters here. You're from Scottsdale. Do you play golf? Because it feels like all BYU quarterbacks play golf and are pretty good. Where do you fit into that conversation? I do. My clubs are actually right <laughs> over my shoulder right here. Um, had to play. I'm not very good by any means, but, you know, um, you know, being home, played a few times already. My dad's just retired, too, so he's trying to get really good and kind of showing me the ropes a little bit. But, yeah, yeah, I play golf, but that doesn't mean I play it well. <laughs> I think that goes for most of us, right? That's right. Have your folks yeah. purchased BYU shirts yet? Are they, are they sporting the colors? I, I That's a great question. I need to ask. I know my dad's on it. Um, 
And I know everyone's asking me, hey, bring me a shirt when you get back for, for spring break or for the summer. But um, I think they're on it. They're definitely close. My dad's probably looking it up as we speak. <laughs> I can guarantee you when you arrive on January 5th or shortly thereafter that we will have a BYU Sports Station something. You know, there, there will be something for you, Keaton. I, I, I'm positive about this. So uh, we'll make sure that happens. If not for you, at least for your parents, we, we can take care of that. Absolutely. Um, Great to talk with you. Great to get to know a little bit about you. I'm glad you survived the onslaught of John Beck and Jaron Hall. Uh, those are tough recruiters those are, right there. Those are tough guys. But welcome again to BYU Football and BYU Sports Nation. Awesome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You got it. Keaton Slovis with us. His first interview at BYU as he steps in to become the next BYU quarterback. And